Welcome back to Shawnee RC. And we've got this race tomorrow. We've got an unpainted shell. So we're going to change that. But we're also going to go through some new techniques that I've learned on the painting side to get those nice thin lines. If you haven't started your airbrushing journey yet, go for it. It's not as hard as what it looks. It just takes practice. And you will make mistakes. And you will ruin some perfectly good bodies. But once you get there, it'll be worth it. Let's get painting. <laughs> There'll be links in the description for all the items that I'm using. So have a look, all the details will be down below. Let's go. So let's just go over some setup on what I use to paint body shells. Chosen airbrush is the Eyewater Eclipse HPCS. I did try quite a few different airbrushes, but I found this airbrush to give me a next level experience and yeah, it just works. My idea with this was, if I buy the best airbrush I can, it eliminates any excuses from the airbrush, so awesome. Paints we're gonna to use today, we're gonna to use a little mixture between Hobby Knox for the fluoros. I love the Hobby Knox teal or the solid aqua. And the Valio paints. I'm going to use a bit of silver on one of the outlines on this. Ordinarily, as we can see, I went with a different colour here for this outline, but we're going to scrap that and we're going to go for a silver outline. We're going to kind of mirror this onto our B6. B6? B7 body shell gonna try and make it look dialed. So for those of you who have asked recently what I use to apply my liquid mask, I have a separate compressor, a larger compressor, which I use a sort of full size paint spray gun just for the ease of it. I am gonna be testing some smaller guns um, so I can use it on my compressor here. But yeah, for now, we'll just use the larger compressor just for the ease of it. Three coats, dry with a hairdryer in between. Perfect. I've always been a massive fan of these Bitty Design pens. Got a good sized nib. They last. And yeah, quite, as you can see on the camera, it's an extremely thin nib, so you can get your design very nice. Another trick, as per my other painting videos we've learning so far, just a header card. You can use this to get your lines. You can use it to measure your lines so you can mark off as you go and you can get symmetrical lines. So, let's go. As always, we're gonna start by just marking around the windows. Mark our central line. And then what we can do with our header card is when we're doing the other side to this top roof design, we can just mark off the length of this line. Copy it across to the other side. Measure the gaps here. And that's gonna ensure we're the same.
first layer. As I've said, go with the contours of the body. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along at the moment. Roughly copying the other design. Go for it. I think this is what makes the designs pop. As I say, I'm no expert, but when you do your second layer, it's gonna kind of sit behind the first layer, and that's kind of what makes it pop. Now all we need to do is replicate this side onto this side. And we can do so and we can do so with our header card. And because we've done our lines going with some of the contours of the body, it's a little bit easier to make some reference points this side. So, you may have noticed that these nice thin outlines here, we haven't marked two pen lines. There's a reason for this, because we've got a new technique. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna cut with our knife our outline in. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna run over all of our markings with a blade, see from the inside. And then once we've done that, we're gonna take all the pen off the outside of the shell so all we'll see through here is actually just the cut line. And then when we go in to do our second outline, we can go right up against the cut line because we can see it rather than just seeing a pen. We can actually see exactly where the cut line is, but it's coming. Hang on, be patient. Now, before we get back to that, let's talk knives. You'll find a lot of people use these. And to be honest, it's a good knife. Exacto, blade. I've got one of them. I've got a cut down one. But particularly for the lines that are a little bit straighter, I always revert back to just a standard bare Stanley blade. I just find I can get the straightest cuts with this, but this is all personal preference. This really is personal preference. I think if you can learn all your cutting with one of these, I think you're gonna be in good stead. I tend to cut it one down so I can get inside of windows and things like that and tight areas, and that's quite good. Certainly most of my cut work, I actually do with one of these. Let me know what you use. Let me know what you've tried and give it a go. So this is exactly what I mean. Pen marks are now gone. So we are just left with the single cut lines. So when we do our next cut line from the inside, we are cutting right up against our line that's already in there. Therefore, we can get a consistent, straight, thin, line well that's the plan nearly there always time to start painting and that's always the fun part to be honest this is where the difference between a good body and a bad body is separated the prep work is key the painting is the easy part you might be wondering what we're going to do with these kind of large areas here well as you can see we add texture by splats and honeycomb patterns. And what that does is it adds a little bit of depth and a little bit of contrast, and I think that really makes the body shell. So that's what we're gonna do in the pink area, which is gonna be here in the teal. Then we have a bit of fluoro yellow, and then possibly a silver outline. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm thinking silver, phalio, or maybe the gum metal again. I don't know, but what I do know is we've got to get this body ready.
One thing you always want to check whether you're going inside or outside because sometimes it can be harder. I've found to do an outline on the outside because you have to kind of travel back further. As you can see, because you can see where that first cut line is, you can get it good. So that's one side done using this method. As I say, I'm not the best painter in the world, but you can see how you can get thin kind of controlled lines. Just by using this method. So now we're going to do the same thing on this side. And then we're going to get painting. Gotta say, I absolutely love the shape of this B7 body. Looks awesome. Can't wait to see it on the car. There we have all the cutting done at last. So as you can see, all the outlines are in place. No double pen mark necessary. We're going to start now painting and we're going to do all of the black outlines, which is going to be the pink section, which is going to have the black outline. The yellow, I don't know, maybe do black there as well to make it pop. And silver might be too light. Yeah, right, we're going to black it out. We're going to black every outline. So now we need to just weed the outline out so then we can apply our Valio Black. So let's get our head down, let's get this painted, let's do it. So that initial two coats of black is done, so next. We're going to do the next darkest color, which is going to be the teal. So this is going to be this back section here. So we're going to peel this mask off. But before we put the teal on, we're going to do the texture and the patterns and the, the splatters and things like that, because obviously we've got the black. And then while we've got black in the airbrush, we can obviously get this done now. So let's just unpeel this and get this black texture done. So, this is where we're at so far. We've got the black outlines done, which you can't really see. And we've got the honeycomb random shading, and then the splatters, which will all add contrast to the teal, which we're just about to do. So we're gonna do the teal, and then we're gonna do the high -vis yellow, then we'll do the pink, back it with white, job done then we need to get on with the prep so we're nearly there hope you're enjoying this so far i'm not the best painter in the world but i'm just showing you with a little bit of practice you can get something that's kind of semi-usable to a to a point i mean it's good it's usable and it's good it's enjoyable so let's carry on teal complete i love this color so much I just think it's just the most gorgeous colour ever and combined with the pink. Personal preference, but yes. Fluoro pink. Let's go. Now we can see where the yellow is going to sit behind the pink and the teal. Hobby Knox, yellow, left as is, doesn't need thinning out I find. 
So we are nearly there. We've backed it with white. We've got the yellow on. What I'm gonna do now is remove the window mask. I'm gonna cut the shell out and then we're gonna peel the clear film off the top. I'm gonna do it together and we're gonna see what it looks like underneath. Overall, looks okay for now. I wish you I see there, but hey, let's do the unveiling shortly. Just get these masks off. Okay, so other than tidying up the front with the Dremel, just giving it a bit of a rough cut. Let's see what we're left with. Okay. That's all right. Quite happy with that. Pink's a little bit faded. I've not quite put enough pink fluoro on, but that is quite a hard colour to get right. But for the most part, quite happy with that. You know, for 10 shells deep, I'm happy with that. When we get some stickers on it, we've got the new B7 stickers, Team Associated. 32 time, factory team. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. 